listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Friday, June 16th, 2023. Today is two incredible things that are coinciding. Today is the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Happy Feast Day, and congratulations to every family that will be consecrating themselves to Jesus in his heart today. Today is also the feast of an incredible saint who had a powerful devotion to Jesus in his heart. Her name is Saint Lutgard. She lived in Belgium in the 11 and 1200s. And today on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we are going to hear her incredible story. And I hope that it draws you even closer to Jesus and his heart. So Saint Lutgard grew up in Belgium. She was sort of religious, not really. She ended up living in the convent at a young age because her father made a foolish business decision and lost her dowry. Now, a dowry was a sum of money that a woman's family would pay to her husband's family. And without that money, at the time, women could not get married. So St. Lucard was sent to the convent just because there was no other options for her. So she lived there, but she wasn't very interested in religious life. And in fact, she was a little naughty. She had a little boyfriend that she would sneak into the convent, into the parlor, and just talk to while the other nuns were praying. So one day she was doing this when all of a sudden, in the middle of this conversation, Jesus appeared to her. He appeared to her and he showed her his wounds and the boy who was there with her, he couldn't see anything, but Lucard was totally changed by this revelation. And in that vision, St. Lucard later wrote that Jesus said to her that he pointed to his heart and the wound that was there on his heart and the blood dripping. And he said, here forever is what you should love and how you should love. Here in this wound, I promise you, the most pure of joy. Now, in this moment, St. Lucard was changed. After witnessing Jesus and seeing his heart, she knew that that was the only thing that she wanted. Within a year, she was making her full vows as a nun. She dedicated herself to prayer. And she also was one of the first people to really write about and experienced true mysticism. In fact, what she experienced, she called the mysticism of the presence. And this means that she experienced that Jesus is always with us, that he is here with us, wanting to be almost in constant conversation with us. He wants us to share our thoughts, our words, our days with him. In fact, St. Lucard had a practice that whenever she was busy at work, let's say she was doing laundry, she would be speaking out loud to Jesus. And if another nun came up to her and wanted to have a conversation, she would politely say to Jesus, oh, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm going to attend to this matter and I will be right back. She would say that she was constantly in conversation with our Lord. She also had real mystical experiences. So St. Lucard lived in Belgium, and the first convent that she was part of was in Belgium, where they spoke Flemish. But eventually, she desired a more strict lifestyle, so she moved to a convent that was in France, where they spoke French. Unfortunately, she was unable to learn French. She also really struggled to learn Latin. And so she was in this convent where she couldn't understand really any of the sisters with her. And she also really struggled to read the Bible, which was in Latin at the time. So in a mystical experience, Jesus appeared to her and asked her what great gift he could give her. And she asked for the ability to understand languages, to be blessed with this supernatural ability, particularly to understand Latin and read the scriptures. Well, Jesus said yes, and she received this supernatural ability. So she dove into scripture, she studied, studied, but she still felt so empty. 
And so she prayed and she once again had a mystical encounter with Jesus. And he asked her why she was so sad. And she said, Lord, I want to return this gift to you. I no longer want this supernatural ability to understand languages. She said, I want something different. And because she and Jesus were so close, he was willing to give her something different. And so she said that instead of this ability, she wanted his heart, that that was all she wanted. And so Jesus agreed. He removed his own heart and placed it within her chest. And from that moment forward, St. Lugard really lived with the divine, the sacred heart of Jesus burning within her. In fact, the last 11 years of her life, she was blind and crippled. And she lived in a community where she could not communicate with the other nuns because they all spoke French and she did not. And so she lived out these final years in isolation, in darkness, and yet records record that she was so joyful, so filled with charity and love because the very heart of Jesus, his sacred heart that is constantly pouring out pure divine love specifically for the person that stands in front of him that burned within St. Luke Gard. And so let's all pray that we can ask Jesus to place his heart inside of us, that we can let go of all other hopes and ambitions, and that we can hope only for his heart. If you and your family are consecrating yourselves to Jesus in his most sacred heart today, please know that I will be praying specifically for you and for all families that we can truly become part of Jesus's heart and present this most sacred heart to the whole world. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Thank you so much for joining us this week on the Catholic Sprouts podcast as we discuss the sacred heart of Jesus. A big congratulations to all of the families out there that will be making this consecration to Jesus and His Sacred Heart on the feast this coming Friday. If you're just hearing about this for the first time, we do have a 33-day preparation for consecration to Jesus and His Sacred Heart. We have copies left in a digital copy as well. It is a good time, any time, to make this consecration. So if you would like to do that, please check the notes for this podcast episode. Get your copy, start preparing, and give your family to Jesus and His heart. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.